digital presence. I'm still going to have to shorten that intro. I'm pretty sure that's uh, goes on a little long. Goes there. on for a bit, but it's yeah. it's 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 good. So but I, it's 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 good ha- head banging music. You yeah. know, that way you bang your head into the wall. You get ready for the life, which is what this is. It's Wednesday. It is Woo! noon. Yeah. It's time for the Life Radio Show. I'm your host Don Smith. Uh, sitting across from me today, uh, founder and CEO and and Lord of Eventide Entertainment yes. Podcast Power Network. Me me. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Shea's in the studio. Hey Don, good what's to be happening, back. man? Man, it's uh. It's been a busy couple of weeks, eventful. Lots that, of, that it has. Lots of things going on, yeah. things we can and cannot talk about. And... Yeah, I, I really don't have a whole lot that's been going on that I can talk yeah, about. Yeah, it's true. Um, but, I, but I can say I, I had a great time at the Murphy Theater on Saturday uh, watching the uh, premiere of From Gettysburg to Baghdad. Oh. Starring me, among others. I didn't know you made another movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it premiered Saturday down in, uh, in Wilmington. And I got to hang out with uh, one of my co-stars, uh, boxing legend James Buster Douglas. Really? Who put Tyson on his butt in the early 90s. Get out. <laughs> yeah. Get out. Nice. Yeah. And it, it was just a short film, so about 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. And then after the film, we actually watched the uh, we watched the Tyson-Douglas fight <laughs> sitting next to Douglas. So All right. Enough, kinda... of, enough of that movie. Let's watch me beat yeah. Tyson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which, yeah, it was, it, it was entertaining. So it was the movie, but yeah. it was entertaining to watch the Rewatch the fight. I think I watched it back in it was 1990. It was like February 1990 or something like that. When, I think uh, I think I've seen video of it just on and off over the years. Um, it's one of those ones that you know about. But yeah. I was I was a kid. I mean, I was you know in elementary school when that well, fight yeah, happened. I was. So. I think I was in junior high. Maybe. Yeah, junior high. Maybe just into high school. I'd say it's all a blur. Most of high school is a blur. In yeah, elementary and I middle just, school. Every I, pretty much <laughs> school in general. <laughs> Is a blur. I'm I'm still I'm a grad student now, and most of that's a blur too. So mm-hmm. I think it's just life is a series of blurs. <laughs> is really <laughs> what it boils down couple, to. A couple of flash bulbs. It's like it's like it's like a music video. You're not really sure what's going on, but occasionally you get a coherent shot of the band playing. Right. Life <laughs> life is kind of like it's kind of like a porno. You just fast forward to the good parts. It's really you know that's that's most of life is you just fast forward until there's something on there you want to see. Oh, look, there's a guy walking up yeah. to the door with a hard hat on. I wonder what's going to happen next. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that's a pizza delivery guy. It looks Looks like he's needing to, needing some money she ain't got. <laughs> Is everybody paying attention yet? We want to make sure we've right. got everybody's attention. <laughs> yeah. So that yeah, that's uh, that's that's life. It's just just for, fast forward into the naked bits. That's, yeah. really, that's really all it is. Then I am currently on a very long fast forward right yeah. now. <laughs> I'm a married man. I know how you feel. <laughs> Let's just fast like, forward through most of that. It's like the old Foxworthy bit. There's not a lot of difference between being single and being married. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> well, I, th- I think you, you get lucky more often when you're single. That's probably true. Well, I don't know. <laughs> I, get, well, I guess the chances are greater. The chances are greater, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I, I, I still occasionally dabble in the online dating thing. Because, you know. Oh, that's, that's it's, bad news. It's a, it's a horrible, horrible wasteland of, of, you know, self-righteousness. But when you work two jobs, it's like, well got to try somehow and yeah that's true i uh, sent a message to a young lady introducing myself my name my name's mike i'm a comedian i'm a broadcaster you know i like x y and z and her her response verbatim was what do you expect me to do with this information <laughs> that's it well, well, well it's a least... dating site i was kind of hoping that at yeah. some point you might think to yourself ah, it, yeah i'd let him you know yeah. but <laughs> <laughs> right that's <laughs> but okay I, I didn't even know how to respond i was just kind of like well um I guess nothing now. I guess yeah, I'm not expecting yeah. to do anything at this point and <laughs> moved on. But considering out of out of, you know, fifty messages I've sent out to people, that's the one response I've gotten. It's yeah. 
probably a sign. I, that, guess, I guess your response should have been, well, I guess with that attitude, just swipe left. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry to have wasted your time. No, I, I tried <laughs> online dating for a while. You get you get some loons every now and then. Yeah, it's 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 too much of a gamble. Like, I think it's yeah. more of a gamble than regular dating because, oh, definitely. you know, it, it's it's a matter. You know, if I if I go up to somebody in public, I say, hi, how you doing? My name's Mike. And, and there's a chance of a conversation. But with online dating, you can sit there and, and say that a hundred times and you have no and people will just not respond. Yeah. Or they'll say, well, that's not, th- those are the kind Which of messages. Which is nicer than getting a drink in your face. I that's suppose, true. So. Yeah, because that gets sticky. But, uh, <laughs> you know. Well, uh, you get- <laughs> I guess either, well, you know. You get, the, you get the ones who will say, like, oh, I don't respond to messages like that. Well, what 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 do you respond to? I'll try one of those. How does that sound? Let's let's play roulette here until something sticks. How does that sound? Yeah, there you go. Send, send her one of those D picks. <laughs> Does the, you respond to that any better? Yeah. Uh, I've got a zoom on me. <laughs> <laughs> I studied photography in, in college, yeah, so I'm really good at angles. Yeah, and angles I, and shading. That's really depth of <laughs> field. <laughs> Not a lot of depth, but depth right. nonetheless. <laughs> uh, that's terrible. Mm. No, I, I, I did try online dating for a while, and it, 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 you run into some. This was in between marriages. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> After my first, I was going to say, Don, is your actually, wife listening to this show? Actually, <laughs> as my first marriage was ending, <laughs> once everything was filed and we were just waiting for the court date, I I, I started hitting up some of the sites, and I had uh, this this one young woman. I went out with her, and she she had like three kids, which I'm cool with that, mm-hmm. you know. But I I told her up front, nothing really serious right mm-hmm. now. I just came out of a seven year marriage, right? You know, I'm I'm just looking to. So you're wild. Hang out, you know, and uh, she was fine with that. And, uh, the, like the second date I went over to her house and one of her kids jumped in my lap and called me daddy. And I was like, uh, all right. So it was nice. Nice meeting yeah, you. Yeah. Good hanging out with you. I gotta go. I have I a good life. I left. Uh, I, I think I will be leaving the gas on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <God>. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, uh, I, 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 do a bit once in a while where i talk about i you know when i well, i signed up for uh for uh match.com i gave in and tried one of the paid ones because like an idiot i thought well if people are going to pay for this right surely they'll no it wasn't any better I, there was one woman i met who had she was she was 20 years old had four kids from like three different guys had no job no education was only seeking men in their 60s or older with an oh, income okay, of like gotcha, two hundred thousand gotcha. dollars, because you can sort by income on Match. dot com. Well, so that's that's yeah. good to know. That's so to know, it's just cause... like she seems to be channeling the spirit of Anna Nicole Smith. It looks yeah. like, and hey, but good yeah. luck to her. You know, yeah. If, if you know what you want, go get it. Just because you know what, if I'm a sixty seven year old multimillionaire and I got nothing going on, and you know that I'm I'm good with that. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I, on the other hand, am a 30-year-old guy with, you know, not a lot to his name living in his parents' basement. Right, right. Uh, you know, I'm not ready to. But, hey, you're a comedian with the, with a whole podcast network. That's true. Your name, so not that's, many can say that. I mean, I, I you know, if, if I didn't have my own radio show, I might sleep with you. <laughs> I'm going to make sure. I'm just going to write that down so I remember that just for later. Case, if yeah. Don loses his radio show, lock your door. Yep. yep. <laughs> Yep, I didn't say you would approve. <laughs> when a man's desperate, there's no telling what he's going to do to you. That's why God gave us the internet, my friend. <laughs> so, uh, well, let's dive right into it. Yeah, uh, no. What, what's now, what's now happening? That we've put the toe in the water. <laughs> yeah, yep, now that we've tested things out, we can go ahead and get started with this radio show. Yeah. All that stuff before, we were just testing our limits. We have not had the station manager come in here and cut the, you know, cut the broadcast, so we're good. I exactly. We're- we know where we stand. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> uh, tell me a little bit about Even Tide Entertainment that so, I'm a part of, and we just yeah. want to promote it anyway. Yeah, so, so Even Tide is something I started back in 2012 with a couple friends. Uh, it was originally a record label. Is what it was meant to be because if there's one thing I love more than comedy, it's music. Love more all kinds of music. Comedy. Yeah, I I I'm a mu- I am a musician. I play two instruments. Was the vocalist for a Judas Priest cover band for a while, which awesome. was just the best. <laughs> Man, I miss doing that. Um, 
And so, yeah, I can tell by your Facebook fan. I am, you. You're you're a bit of a fan of. Uh, Judas I'm, I'm 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 a priest fan. I challenge anybody to be a bigger Judas Priest fan than myself. Yeah, now they're still they're still making out. They're breaking. Sorry, they're, sorry to jump. No, in you're on fine. It, but. They put one out a couple of years ago called Redeemer of Souls, which was very good, and they just announced they're dropping a new one next year. I, I'm going to have to pick up some of the new ones because I, I like the old Judas Priest. Yeah. I haven't really listened to anything lately. I've been on a Ripper kick. There was that the Ripper era of Judas Priest where Rob Halford wasn't the vocalist. Hmm. They actually had a guy from Akron, Ohio named Tim Owens. His nickname was Ripper because that was the name. He was the singer of a Judas Priest cover band who was very good, who they brought in to sing for a few years, and he did a couple albums with them. And the the movie Rockstar with now, Mark why, Wahlberg. Why wasn't, uh, why wasn't Halford? Uh, it's never saying, really that, been sure. confirmed because oh, it, okay. it wasn't until after that that he came out as gay. Uh, openly right. and so they made the movie rock star with mark Wahlberg, um where he plays the singer in a cover band who takes over for a major for the band originally it's kind of loosely based on that story um in that a cover band singer takes over but there was the there was a point in the movie where they're like oh the original singer got kicked out because he was gay hmm. obviously that wasn't the case because yeah. halford has since gone back to judas priest right um I think it was just more of a he wanted to do thing. Judas Priest wanted to try some new stuff. He didn't because the the albums that Tim Owens did with Judas Priest were sounded a lot more like like Pantera. Honestly, oh, okay. they were a lot heavier and a lower tuning. I joke with my friends like, yeah, it was those four years that Judas Priest thought they were Pantera. Um, but it was. I'm, I'm going to have to get back in. Yeah, this, I, I haven't listened to uh, I haven't listened to Judas Priest in a long time, well, probably since like Turbo album. Uh, yeah, but you know, <laughs> that's, that's, that's good stuff though. Turbo Lovers is <laughs> oh, a great yeah, song. Yeah. But yeah, so even I started out as as a record label. Um, we were putting out singer songwriter stuff, EDM stuff, rock metal, all different genres. We had a country folk trio who we worked with, who we no longer work with, but they're still they're still going strong down south. They were you know torn over about a three four state range and mm. we're putting out albums so you know we've had we've we've had some amount of success um That's good. we were under a different name back then we were called housebound housebound records what we were called originally um eventually when myself and robert the guy who runs it with me there was a third there was a third partner in there at one point robert and i both moved up north i moved here to dayton he moved to chicago uh housebound didn't do much for a while um the third partner kind of just wasn't really doing anything. He was one of the musicians who was on the label, wasn't putting music out, was kind of the silent partner in that he never really did anything. So, Well, silent partner isn't really good for music. No, it's not. You, <laughs> want, you, want, to have, you want to have as much input as possible. So we, uh, this past year, Robert and I were talking, so we want to relaunch, but we, want to, we should probably rebrand as well. Um, the other partner wasn't too keen on the idea. He kind of wanted to do things differently. Then there was some personal beef between him and Robert. So we decided it was best if that person was no longer with the organization. Um, I, I know how that works. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we, we changed the name, kind of created as much of a degree of separation as we could from our previous iteration. Um, other than that individual, everybody else who was signed with us is still signed with us and still being produced and managed. So we decided to branch out into other forms of entertainment, like podcasting, video production. Um, my short film that I did this year, Cross the Gem, was was hmm. technically produced by Eventide Entertainment. Um, so yeah, I, did, I didn't know you made short. Films. I did. I usually this is my first one that I've made in a long time. My brother's more of the filmmaker than I am. He actually went to film school and does a lot of stuff with with Generation Date, and he's a, he's he's more of the filmmaker. I'm more of the film fan. But my alma mater down in South Carolina, Lander University, does a film festival every year that I always entered just kind of as a joke. I made, like, stupid little YouTube videos and would submit them in just because they were funny. This one was kind of one that was something close to my heart that I had an idea for, so I went ahead and wrote it. It was about, it was dealing with the, the heroin epidemic and the overdose epidemic going on in the Miami Valley because um, I had two friends over the span of like, three months pass away from heroin overdose. Wow. So I made the film and submitted it, and it was nominated for a few awards. I went down for the ceremony. It was a lot of fun. But even Tide produced that, and then we wanted to, because I love doing podcasting. I'm an old-school radio guy. So I ran it by Robert, because he had always been interested in podcasting, but had never done it. So I said, what if what if even Tide did a podcast network? Um, so I had my show. We came up with one for him. He and I do one together as well, and that was kind of the foundation. Um, and then we brought the life on. We brought Don on. You, Don, I'm talking about you right, in the third right. person That's for okay. some reason. Um, That's okay. Don doesn't mind. 
Don doesn't mind. Don's all right. <laughs> Don's getting angry. Uh, so, and then from there, we were like, hey, well, so now we've got one on. We have one on Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Let's just fill out the week. And so we set out originally just to fill the Thursday slot. And I wanted to get a movie show. I had done movie reviews right. my whole life, um, but I wanted somebody else to do it. I didn't want all the stuff on the right, network you didn't to want be the me. whole network. Yeah, yeah gotcha. Because because we already have that problem with a lot of the music. A lot of the music and artists that we have on the label are either me or Robert See, or some now combination. You're gonna be on my show, so you're going to be on <laughs> exactly. every show this week. Exactly. Much, so. um, and I was supposed to be. I was supposed <laughs> to be on Aaron's show. Aaron, who Aaron Lopez, who now hosts the Drive In, right. which is our movie review show on Thursdays um i was supposed to be on his last week and unfortunately scheduling didn't permit it but again it was like man i'm just gonna show up on everybody's show at some yeah, point well here. i mean you're the boss so i am the bad. boss so. <laughs> um but we we sent out asking people people to audition for the movie show and 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 aaron came by way of you um he through said jordan he, through yeah. Lopez, yeah and then um, who i worked with in the unwritten podcast oh okay and which i finally sat down and listened to yeah it's good stuff yeah i liked it a lot so we had we had four we had four people who were submitting one of whom dropped out so we had three really great submissions to the point where we couldn't decide which one we liked. Um, but Aaron came to us with more of a solid planned out format for what he wanted to do with the show over both like a short period of time and a long period of time. Right. So we gave him the movie show because he had a definite plan. The other two were great personalities, wrote he had great thoughts they were able to put out pretty well. So I knew Jessica for I've known Jessica for ten years. We're old friends. We met through my ex fiance, which is weird. Uh, <laughs> so, she was my ex fiance's best friend, and we wound up being better friends than than the two of them ever did. Oh well, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Some, sometimes that works out. Life's weird. So uh, Jessica and I both started doing YouTube videos about the same time back in two thousand eight. Back before like that was a thing. Before like you could make a career out of that, we just did them because they were fun. And so you can I make did a career out of YouTube videos. Now apparently wow. you can. I haven't figured out. I haven't cracked the code on that one yet. Yeah, that but was, um, that's different. But uh, so she did, she had a book review show, and I had a music review show back then. So I said, "Hey, you ever thought about doing book reviews again?" Because she's the kind of person she can read like three books in a week. I I love to read, not that much. Yeah, I wish I had the time. Yeah. Ex- and she's she's fresh out of college, just moved to New York, is the, isn't working yet. So she's she's, she's got some time oh, on her okay. hands. Oh, well, yeah, there you go. So I said, do you want to do your book show again? And she, and we kind of threw some ideas around. And so so she does a book show now on Sundays called the Bookseller, and that just had its first episode last week. And then Ellison Smith, who's a guy I went to college with, who I worked at the campus radio station with, who's a who's a big into video games. He runs a video game show called Saltwater Gaming on Saturdays. So now we have a show for every day of the week. Hmm. So That's between, yeah. and we have yours, which is live here on Wednesdays, and then we drop the rebroadcast, the full show on Fridays. R- remind me when we go to break, because there's a, a video game store that a friend of mine runs uh, down north of Cincinnati that might be interested in That'd be cool. possibly sponsoring. Yeah, we're, we're at that point now where we're starting to look for sponsors for everybody. We, we spoke with the Neon about sponsoring Aaron's show. Um, you know, don't have much of a budget for marketing, you know, it's, they're an independent movie theater. Um, so we're working on something with them looking for other stuff as well. That's kind of where we're at now is we've got the seven shows. We're trying to build the audience and find a way to generate some revenue from everything. So, right. but that is the hardest thing. That is, do. that is the hardest thing to do because you really have to prove to them why it's worth their money. Right. I, yeah. I think generating revenue in general is uh, getting yeah. more difficult with, yeah. cause everybody's out there doing this unless you just, you know, decide to hack equifax thank you by the way <laughs> jerks yeah God. yeah they you know well, that's that's the cyber security they really it is yeah. i'm waiting for, i'm waiting to i'm kind of hoping that like the hack will be so intense they'll say you know what just forgive all the debt please that would, yeah that'd be great i could go with that I'm not gonna hold my breath but see I, I never received anything that i was part of the hack but well, i have uh i, I think I think my uh, I think it might be no, it's not Equifax. I think Experian. I actually have my okay. own freeze. Okay, I need to do it with the other ones and just be done yeah. with the whole, you know, fr- freeze everything and then just because I don't really need any loans right now. Well, I I, I didn't <laughs> know anything had happened to me because I I check my credit card statements regularly, um, and then it was like three o'clock in the morning, and I you know I have American Express and you know not to plug but kudos to their customer service. Um, I got a phone call at three o'clock in the morning. Like we just saw that your card was used to wow. buy gas in Georgia. And I'm like, yeah, I don't live in Georgia. So wasn't me. And so we found that, um, cause I, I only use my credit card for gas. 
And so we went back and looked at a bunch of the gas charges and realized, like, yeah, these are shell stations, but these are shell stations in Georgia. And so they're having to go back and figure out how many of these charges have been, you know. Right, not you. Not me. Yeah, I, all, I, had yeah. The, I had a problem about uh, about a year ago. Mm-hmm. I uh, I got a call from uh, – it was, it was actually one of the uh, – I can't even remember. It was a store <laughs> credit card. Some One of them had called and uh, somebody had opened in my name in Florida. Oh. And had run up about $1,500. Oh, jeez. And uh, so yeah. I had to fight with that. I had to get on. I, that's when I started freezing my mm-hmm. uh, freezing my credit reports. That way it has to – you can't access it. Right. And hopefully uh, – I haven't had any problems since. Hopefully I yeah. don't. This it's, is the, it's this the fifth time I've had identity so. theft in my life. Yeah, see, I always so. figured people steal my identity would be just really itching to give it back. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so that's that's going on right now, and we're trying to – so, like I said, I'm just really hoping they forgive more debt than actually they have to just – because I had made a nice big dent in my credit card debt. Yeah. Now it's just all the way back up. Oh, and it's yeah. like, oh, all right, great, cool. That's that's six months of work undone. Sweet. Yeah, <laughs> gotta love it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so that's that's but you know that that's that's the probably the one. Well, I had to give my puppy away yesterday. But uh, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, uh... it was it was. I'm never home anymore. I'm rarely home, and when I am, uh, I'm taking care of my dad. And so she was always either cooped up in her kinder kennel yeah. or, or on a hook outside. And it, or if I if I did have her out, she was cooped up in the basement with me. So yeah, she was how old? She was six months old. She's six, six months, months old. So. I had it for three months, and she just she wasn't getting the exercise, the structure she needed. It was basically I was feeding her, letting her outside, and putting her back, and then having to go do something yeah, I've, else. I've had and the same problem with. So we took her to Sixa. Um, I wanted to make sure she went somewhere that was like a no kill shelter, right. you know. And Sixa does really good work with with finding dogs, good homes, and she's so stinking adorable. She'll be adopted like right away. I mean, we're just walking her through the building, like everybody was stopping what they were doing to come over and. And pet yeah. the dog and play with her. So, which she just loved the attention. So when I left, she wasn't even like sad. She was like, "Whatever, I got people yeah. loving on me. I'm good. Bye, Mike. See you. Yep. See you. Get Best out, luck to you, guy. I'm- <laughs> <laughs> they, they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna walk me more. Which you know, whatever. But so yeah. But that's that's you know, those are the two negative things going on. I got too much good going on right now to to be yeah. sad. Got the show tomorrow at. Uh, at uh, Dayton Funny Bone, doing the Dead Comics tribute show. Oh, are you? Yeah, I'm doing John Panette. Oh, okay. I'm a huge, <laughs> huge John Panette fan. Uh, on the podcast this week it was just the one big tribute to John Panette. Um, he was one of the first comics I really got into when I was first getting into comedy. Because yeah, I'm doing Friday's Dead Comedian Society. Oh, you're doing Wiley's, the Wiley's one. Yeah. And see, I didn't. I'm. I've been out of the loop for a couple of weeks, so I didn't know about the Wiley's one until Sunday. When I was at Wiley's for the for the for the the hangout, and so I was like, "Oh, there's two? Yeah, I think <sighs> I got a message from Dale about two months ago. Really about doing one at Wiley's. Well, this is the first one of these I've done. You know, as far as yeah, and, and you know, I'm I'm still not as I'm mostly just known at the open mics right now. And right. by open mics, I mean all these. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one, the one that yeah. I go to. Um, you know, I've done I've done Wiley's twice. I, I don't do much of the stuff at the clubs yet, so I, I'm not on everybody's like go to list yet. And trying to get there, me either. I just saw it. Ed saw Dale put something <laughs> about it on Dayton Comics page, so I hit him up. Said, yeah. Hey, I I want to do something. So. Yeah, and I just happened to have Thursday off this week. I usually work Thursday, so I was like, well, you know what? I got that day off. I'll give it a shot. And like I said, I'm a huge John Panette fan, so. They got somebody on line one already, so I'm just going to do this. We're not going to play a song yet, and I'm going to go over to it uh, should be Lee Mays on the phone. But oh, let me okay. fin- we should have somebody on the phone. So let's see if we can let's see if we can cue him up here. <laughs> Stop calling this house. <laughs> yeah, let's see if we can get this to work this time because it didn't when Greg Hahn tried to call. Oh, that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is the life. You're on the air. Hello. Hello. Right, let's try this. Hello. Nobody's on the phone. Ah, oh, we tried. Okay, so uh, we'll get off of that. Hey, there, there's Butch. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, huh? Okay. Well, we're gonna go ahead and take a. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and play that song I was gonna play, <laughs> and uh, we'll we'll uh, try to figure out what was going on with the phones here shortly.
All right, we're back on the life. Uh, this is your host, Don Smith, sitting in with Mike Shea in the uh, studio, and we have a phone call. We have a caller on the uh, on the air Woo. that I'm about to take on the air. Hopefully. Uh, we have uh, uh, we have Lee Mays calling in from uh, with the Heathens of Comedy, which is going to be at Wiley's Comedy Club this Friday, Friday, 930. I just announced it in the Comedy Rundown. <laughs> so so uh, here's Lee Mays on the uh, line with us. Hey, Don, thanks for having me on. Hey, th- thanks for calling in. I appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate you, man. We actually got the phone to work this time, <laughs> <laughs> which we, we have issues with from time to time. Are y'all on T-Mobile or something? Well, must be. I don't. Th- I don't think we're on Verizon Network, or we'd be. You know, we'd be through already. But <laughs> well, thank God. Thank God for that. Thank God for small blessings. Yeah, but of course, if we were on Verizon, we couldn't afford to do the rest of the radio show. <laughs> yeah, <would> be... exactly. <laughs> you'd, you'd, you'd be charged like one hundred fifty dollars for a half an hour. Exactly, and I, that we can't afford that. No, I can't even afford that. So uh, you you are uh, you're with the Heathens of Comedy tour, so right? You, you want to tell me a little bit about the about the heathens and why they're such heathens and uh, <laughs> and who they are? Well, the heathens are uh, uh, me, Steve Pops Gaines, and uh, Bobby Joe Stevens. We started out in uh, early 2016, and uh, we are called the heathens because uh, I was once called a deviant. <laughs> That's a lot of comics, though. Well, exactly, but, you know, I, I don't make any qualms about not being a deviant. So I figured, you know, what what is the synonym for deviant? And I was like, heathens. So there's the heathens of comedy. Which, it does have a better ring to it than the deviants of comedy. Yeah, I mean, if the deviants of comedy name would probably work well in some Vegas brothels, but... <laughs> Well, what what but, doesn't but, work well? But for, he, <laughs> but, but for here in Central Ohio, I just went with the heathens because there's a lot of Amish folks around, so I don't want to offend them. That's <laughs> that's true. Yeah, you don't want to listen. You don't want because they're totally going to hear it. <laughs> you, you don't want to offend all the Amish listening in to uh, <laughs> to the radio show and th- they go to the comedy clubs. Yeah, I mean they, they don't have electricity anyway, so we can say whatever we want. They're not going to hear it. <laughs> yeah, but the. Uh, I, I I do like the Vegas brothel idea though. Yeah, that, I think, that, that's that's a good idea for future reference. Yeah, I think I'm going to start broadcasting from one from here on <laughs> out. That's <laughs> ignore the weird noises in the back. Yeah. Uh, so what got you? What got you started in comedy? Um, I've always been a fan of stand up comedy. Uh, when I was very young, I'd watch uh, Eddie Murphy Raw and Delirious. Oh yeah. And and, uh, you know, his, uh, of course, Eddie Murphy is one of the greatest of all time. His, you know, bits and his impressions and his overall cockiness. And I was like, man, I want to do that without, <laughs> you know, wearing, wearing the leather jumpsuit. Right. I, I do it in the leather jumpsuit. That's Look like a sausage. Yeah. It takes, it takes a man to do that. <laughs> exactly. I mean, it, man, if I put, you know, socks in the crotch of the pants of the leather jumpsuit, <laughs> yeah. it, I can pull it off. God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I heard a, heard a comedian say once, "Look like a summer sausage wrapped in cellophane." I think <laughs> <laughs> that's not right. <laughs> Look like you but ate fast, Eddie Murphy. But fast forward, but fast forward twenty uh, some odd years later, uh, in the advent of social media, um, Facebook was getting a bit too heady for me at the time. You know, everyone was posting, you know, pray for this, pray for that, and I just posted, you know, dumb crap on there. And uh, Manuela Hauser, she knew a booker in Huntington, West Virginia, who said, hey, you should try stand-up comedy. And uh, I was like, sure. You know, I've always wanted to do it. And my first stand-up comedy kick was at a gay bar, and I totally bombed. I just, <laughs> I was just terrible. You know, not, not, not you know, Carrot Top or Kathy Griffin terrible, but I was oh, terrible. Oh, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, do do you remember some of those first jokes that bombed? Mostly all of them. <laughs> so you, he still can, uses them. Yeah, do you still use them? Or? <laughs> no, no, I don't use them anymore. No, I, I was going to see if we could get an example of of how how bad they were. Well, you mentioned uh, the FCC might be listening in. Oh, okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We we should probably avoid that then. Right, right. <laughs> so. I, I, 
they do a, the, an open mic in a gay bar. That's how you started. It was actually a, a paid gig, so right off the bat, oh, okay. a, a quote unquote paid professional comedian, but I was far from it at for, the time. For your and, first uh, time was paid. Right. Wow. Jeez, you just made a lot of people jealous. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's not the first time, man. Trust me. <laughs> yeah. But uh I, I started to uh, you know, uh, discover more comics like David Tell, Doug Stanhope. Daniel Tosh, uh, Robert Schimmel, and, uh, of course, Jim Gaffigan, and a bunch of other great comics. And uh, basically, I started practicing more, practicing more, you know, hitting every mic that I could and developing, you know, uh, you know, I guess uh, my own style, I guess. I'm more of a joke guy than a bit guy. But. Right. How long have you been at it? Uh, about five years. Oh, okay. Yeah. Not that long in terms of uh, comedy, but long enough to you know pick up a few things. Well, that's yeah, that's that's pretty good to be running your own show at five years. And I mean, you run the Heathens of Comedy shows, or is that? Yeah, I, I put it together. I you know do all the bookings and, and everything. I mean, there, there's you know so many venues out there looking for alternative entertainment other than music. And there's been a lot of no's and there, you know, and there's been a lot of no answers and, and things like that. But, but, the, but the a lot, one of, lot of restraining that, orders and yeah, oh yeah, that too, you know. <laughs> we're not going to do any, you know, comedy shows at a Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> Aww. That's probably for the best, I think. Probably. I don't want to get arrested or anything. <laughs> you kids ever done cocaine? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, the date's still young. So. Yeah, but, yeah, wait till your parents get a hold of this. Uh, <laughs> Don't do drugs, well, kids. You'll wind well, up like me. <laughs> well, one parent's dead, and the other one is still alive, so, and she's not listening to this. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's that's where you found out you were a deviant. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And well, once I discover my dad's Playboy magazines, of course. Well, yeah, <laughs> it, it's good to discover these things early on. Exactly. I was like four, so I got an education like way <laughs> oh, before yeah. anybody else. <laughs> Building up a tolerance early <laughs> on. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's so many things I can say right now that I can't <laughs> yeah. say on the air. But that's... <laughs> So, so tell us a little bit about what we can expect this uh, this Friday night at Wiley's. Well, the show starts at nine thirty. Uh, the tickets are ten dollars online in advance and fifteen at the door. Uh, we're going to have some of the best comics in Ohio and West Virginia. Uh, Tyler Stewart out of Chillicothe, Ohio, is going to be joining us, as well as Josh McDonald out of Huntington, West Virginia. Uh, they've got comedy club experience. They've opened for some uh, uh, big names. Uh, you can expect you can expect uh, some raunchy jokes, some in uh, no holds barred jokes. It's going to be kind of Halloween themed, and uh, my manager Janet Gray is actually going to give away a twenty five dollar gift certificate to Wiley's for best costume. And if no one wears a costume, we'll just pick out the ugliest person. In the <laughs> well, then, damn! I better get myself over to that show. Yeah, there you go, yeah, Mike. <laughs> a free gift certificate. Yeah. <laughs> can't beat that. Well, I appreciate you calling in. I'm looking forward to the show this Friday night. I'll be there as I'm, awesome. I'm, I'm part of the show before that. So, uh, and I'll be hanging out afterward and looking forward to seeing you and awesome. uh, everybody needs to get out to Wiley's this Friday and check out the heathens of comedy. Absolutely. All right, man. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Yep. Thanks for calling in. We'll see you on Friday. See ya. All right. That was, that was Lee Mays of the heathens of comedy. Uh, going to be at Wiley's this this Friday at uh, nine thirty. All right. Sounds like we're going to be a good show. Two shows in one day. You know, it's it's a good it's good things going on. Yeah, yeah, can't beat that. Well, it's one of the great things I like about about Wiley's is there's usually two shows. Yeah. In a day, so whether it's the same guy or two different shows, like there's there's plenty to do there. Yeah. Well, the Friday late shows are, are pretty good there. Mm-hmm. I mean, they, they've been because uh, a lot of times it's. Uh, ranson car dale blumquist running a friday late show yeah and that's uh, it's kind of like you can get the uh on a friday late show a lot of times you can get some of the local experienced 
comics out there as opposed to on sunday nights with wiley <laughs> sunday comics you get all levels a lot of noobs of experience and every now and, yeah every now and then you get a noob that runs the light and gets mad when they cut the mic off. yeah we <laughs> had uh, we had one of those at the uh, at, at ollie's on monday and i'm blanking on the dude's name I, I, i've never been to ollie's is that a, is that a good mic it's, usually or well it's the only weekly one we have right now well yeah. but it's i like it because i like it because one i like i like ollie's i like the beer i like the food um it's got a good performance atmosphere because it has an actual stage um there's live music going on before the comics go on and most of the musicians will stick around for the show the trouble we have is that it's monday night at a sports right. bar so yeah but well, it's kind of like chapter tuesday night uh, yeah. yeah doing a bar show <laughs> yeah. during the week can it be is kind of rough but like one of the things because it was myself and travis charles and the new guy there on monday and travis and i usually hit that one pretty regularly and it's it's a good mic to go up and just you know practice crowd work because you know usually what what crowd is there paying attention you can usually make fun of them for something it's good to get up there right. and just talk and you know maybe rant a little bit ramble a bit and just kind of Get the bugs out. Um, I, I, I practiced my stuff for the John Panette tribute for Thursday, so I basically went up and said, "All right, I'm gonna do an entire set as John Panette." So you might know these, you might not, and it was it was pretty funny. It was good to work on the work on the voice, and but you know, Ollie's is I, I like going to Ollie's because it's it's not intimidating, and so it's a good comfortable mic right. to go do. Um, there's that's, that, that's always good to have one that's a, yeah. And more laid back. I've never been heckled there. Uh, the only time anybody's ever been heckled on Ollie's is just this one girl who's a regular who, by the time the comics go on, or is is just hammered. So if she's there, you're going to have to deal with her. But other than that, the wait staff are usually really good. Um, it's 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 just a fun, comfortable mic to go do. Yeah, I, I haven't been heckled a lot. I mean, no. that, there's uh, one of the, well, the last show I did out in uh, the streets of Oregon district. <laughs> for uh feathers oh, the feather show feathers, yeah. uh, spooky spooktacular jokey <laughs> jokes was uh yeah there were there was a heckler there through the whole uh the whole show one of the uh was it one of the famous oregon district homeless guys uh no but well oh. he, he might have been i don't know <laughs> he, had, he had a bit of a uh he, he smelled a bit gamey he could <laughs> he could have been i don't know that's the trouble with the with the, with the feathers mike is they get so close you can smell them yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a very intimate mic. It could it could it could have been him. It could have been the Oregon district. Who knows? It's, that's yeah, that's true. You never I sometimes it's hard to tell. I have never I've neither done the feather show nor seen the feather show. I keep wanting to go down and check it out. They're they're a lot of fun. They're yeah. it, it's it's one of those that's kind of, now the one outside mm -hmm. I think it's a little more tense because you never know what's gonna happen with people, but uh I mean the worst you can the worst that could happen, I suppose, somebody come up and punch you in the mouth, but that did, uh, didn't happen. I mean, that's, <laughs> that, that sounds kind of crappy, but yeah, <laughs> but yeah. I, it seems ah. like it's it's different you enough. On. You get on, yeah. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's different enough that it's like that. Just seems like something's lot. You know, put up some some chairs in the street and yeah, and tell some. Well, jokes. he's even got a little stage now. It's a little. Oh, it's he? like a, it's like a little four by four metal. Oh, platform. that's cool. So yeah, he's got a little stage he sets up. That's out cool. There now Aaron's doing good things. Yeah, Aaron and, and I, I think that uh, I think he said he, he's not going to do one of the outdoor ones for a while. And sometime in the winter, he's going to do another one in the right. store, and then back well, in the spring, it'll it is start getting out. cold. So yeah, I mean, finally, that's it. That's, that's, that's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's that's like a show for hardcore comics, you know. It's yeah, like, uh, that's not one for a casual. It's not one for casual fans or casual performers. That's, right, that's one. Right, that, that's that. That's probably why I didn't, you know, didn't have the best time there. But I was yeah. I was having a, a, a interesting night that night anyway. That seems like a really heavy crowd work show. Yes, just making yeah. fun of the folks walking by. And I've I, I've always been wanting to work on my crowd work, but I've always been scared too. So yeah, that's not my forte. Um, same with mm -hmm. with hecklers. I I haven't been heckled much in my life, but um, the few times I have, I'm not very good at on the spot improv stuff. I did some yeah. improv in high school, but my I, problem is I'm either I was either fold. Or I get way too mean, way too fast. Yeah, let's say I. I think I've been heckled more in my daily life than I have on stage. So, you know, and most most married men know this. That was true. <laughs> you get you get heckled daily. Yeah. As 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 long as I was in a relationship with with my last girlfriend, you know, thinking back on, it, I should be better at at dealing with with, with snide comments <laughs> yeah, than that, I yeah, am. That, that's but... what it is. Just act like you're in an <laughs> argument with your girlfriend and you're good. You... <laughs> oh, man. Picture your girlfriend. Well, no, don't do that. Yeah, until you <laughs> until you start screaming about her mother, then <laughs> yeah. then 
then you've gone too far and you've lost the crowd. That's <laughs> oh man, yeah. I I think I, and most of the things I've said I can't repeat on this show, but yeah. Because actually, at the show we were being heckled for feathers a couple Saturdays ago, I did bring up the guy's mother. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so there you go. It's just, it's just like an argument with the. <sighs> The most I had was I was doing a show at a place when I was living down in Columbia, and there was a place in town called the Hookah Bar, and it was actually, like, it was a really nice, chill, like, leather couches, really kind of upscale place, and we were doing a show there, which comedy shows at hookah places are tough, because everyone's so chill and mellowed out that you, a lot of times you don't get a reaction because they're just off in their own head, Yeah. but one of the guys who was there was uh, John Abraham, who's an NFL player, who was from, he was from Columbia, He's played for, like, the Falcons. He played for the Panthers. He played for, um, I forget who else, but at the time he was a free agent. So he was just hanging out in the hookah place with his buddies and their uh, their, their lady friends and uh, was just making fun of everybody who went up on stage. And on one hand, you want to get mad, but at the same time, you're like, that's an NFL player. Like, right, yeah. I'm what am, gonna... I, what <laughs> am I going to say? I know this dude's career. Well, I could, I could make everybody else knew his career. I was in the green room Googling him because I don't watch football and I have right. no idea who he was. You were just fi- trying to find something you could come back with. <laughs> but, like, the dude's, like, you know, got like a Heisman Trophy, was a star player for University of South Carolina. I was like, I can't make fun of this dude. He has lived a considerably better life than yeah. I have. <laughs> he's, here with, he's here with five women, and I'm here yeah. telling jokes and drinking a free Sprite. Yeah, so. that, that's, that's when you just go, oh, yeah, you start crying, you run <laughs> yeah. off stage. <laughs> You are. I think what I came up with was was because he was a free agent at the time. I was like, yeah, well, at least I have a job. <laughs> <laughs> Granted, you don't need one, but right, at right. least I've got one. <laughs> so there. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, that that would make it tough to uh, come yeah. back from that kind of heckling. I've been heckled by my mom before. That was. Yeah, that's always that was, fun because you want because you you want to you want to shout back that you remember oh crap I live in her basement. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> what am I gonna say? <laughs> yeah, that de- that definitely makes it tougher there. Yeah, <laughs> I think the last time I did Wiley's, I had to spend half my set apologizing to my mom because <laughs> I, whole... I had one of those too where I I talked a lot about my childhood and some of the things I did and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, at the end of the set I was up there I said just so you. Yeah, you know that, that that thanks for listening now i'm gonna have to spend the rest of the night explaining to my mom i was just kidding <laughs> <laughs> which the bad thing is i wasn't every bit of it was true and <laughs> which makes it even worse because it's all stuff she didn't know was going on so you did what yeah <laughs> and i brought my brother up a lot so oh, i'm geez. sure it got him in trouble which uh eh, he should have been <laughs> his own fault <laughs> yeah well you see when the thing is when you he was uh, he was 13 years old when i was six right you know and at 13 years old he was just starting to experiment with weed no oh. <laughs> and, and you know like a lot of people's favorite experiment was to to get the dog high like, <laughs> except shadow didn't like when you blew in her face All right so after he got the stitches <laughs> He decided to try a new experiment because he had a six-year-old brother. Oh. <laughs> and he didn't have to blow it in my face. I could actually hold it myself. So, <laughs> so yeah, mom learned a lot that night. Oh, man. And uh, I, had to, I had to try to convince her I made it all up for the sake of comedy. It was all a joke, mom. It's okay. See, that, never, that could never could have worked in my family because my two of my brothers and I are all within a few years of each other. And then my two youngest siblings, there's like a 12 year difference, but they can't keep a secret. So you can't do any, you you know, there was a several year period where we were always grounded because we would do something stupid while my parents were gone. And as soon as mom and dad walked in the house, you guys want to know what Michael, Jonathan and Jason did? (laughs) See, I was, uh, I always got blamed for tattling, even though I never did, because I was the youngest of four boys. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, I have a brother that's seven years older than me, a brother that's six years older than me, and a brother that's five years older than me. Mm-hmm. Clearly, I was a <laughs> malfunctioning prophylactic. It's <laughs> about the best I can say. Whoops. <laughs> I was, you know, I was never meant to be, <laughs> but I happened. Well, the thing is, my next brother up did not like the fact that he was no longer the youngest. I think he carried that with him for a long time. Oh. So when he was a teenager, 
he had anger problems. And a lot of times he would take them out on me and then he'd get mad at me for telling on him. It's like, what do you mean telling on him? Mom and dad came home. I had a black eye and a bloody nose. <laughs> they figured it out. <laughs> it's not, it didn't take a genius to figure out what happened here. Yeah, there's only so many doorknobs I could run into, you know? <laughs> My guess is probably the one with the blood splatter yeah. on the door. Yeah. With yep. the trail leading from it. Right. <laughs> yep. Why, why's your brother got a handful of your hair in his hand? Uh, how do you think I hit the doorknob? <laughs> All the clues are coming together. Exactly. Exactly. It wasn't it wasn't old man Fitzgerald. You didn't pull his right. pull his mask off and go, right to it, brother. No, it was it was clearly my brother whooping my butt. <laughs> and oh, that, man. that's the bad thing, is then he'd get twice as mad for me tattling on him as he thought I did. And then I'd get in, you know, I'd get it in worse the next time. It's like whenever a guy rear ends you at a red light. Like, why did you stop at that red light and let me hit you while I was doing eighty? Yeah, what were you thinking? God. Jerk. <laughs> or like whenever somebody gets caught in a lie and they get mad at you for catching them in the lie. Oh, oh my yeah. God. Why? Oh, so what if I lied about it? Yeah, you, you, you lied about it. That you, you did it. Ba- <laughs> why are you getting so mad at me? Because you lie. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, craziness. Gotta love wow. childhood. Oh, yeah. It's great. That's why, <laughs> that's why I can't wait to not have kids. <laughs> <laughs> that's why i can't wait to yeah, not it's have best kids. to wait not to do that exactly that's, yeah just put it put not put not having kids off as long as i'm you gonna can. i'm gonna put off put that off as until it's no longer my decision <laughs> right <laughs> all right well i think uh i think i need to pull up another song before i say it's time for a break yeah because last time it didn't work too well <laughs> when i when i said it's time for a break and didn't have a, so- a song pulled up yet so uh i think we're going to uh yeah, I think we're going to take a break. Uh, Mike, you're welcome to stick around if you want. Got um, Butch coming in. You can Butch hang out in? with him. Yeah. I might hang out for a little bit. Okay. We'll see. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah you're, you're welcome to stick around for a little while. Uh, we're going to take a break, and yeah, we'll be back in a few minutes Woo. with uh, with Butch. See, now I can't find now I can't find the mouse on the screen, so I can start the song. I found the song. I got it queued up. Now, Technical problems. That's uh, let's that's, do it live. I think that's just the name of this show. Is technical problems. <laughs> See, I think what it is. I'm antsy because I got to run down the hall. So, <laughs> all right, we'll be back here shortly.
Are you into making music, videos, or podcasts? Are you a local comedic talent in need of some much-needed publicity? Are you a behind-the-scenes professional interested in audio, video production, graphic design, and public relations? Eventide Entertainment is actively seeking talents, clients, and professionals to help our business grow into something truly special. And we want you to be one of those. For more information, go to facebook.com slash Eventide Entertainment or send us an email at eventideent at gmail.com. All right, we're back on the life. I'm your host, Don Smith. Uh, sitting in the studio, Mike Shea's still with us. I'm not leaving. And uh, he, he's not going anywhere. He's he's going nowhere. I brought a sleeping bag and a pillow. <laughs> and uh, Butch, is it just Butch? Is that how you want to be known? It's kinda just like, Butch. Kind of like yep. Cher and Oprah, you're just right. Butch. You don't really look like Cher or Oprah. No, I look more Butch. More, much more Butch than either one of them. So, <laughs> which, which, I, I don't know if you if you had the long black hair, you could pass for Cher probably. I could. I, you I may really could. need to yeah. trim the mustache a little. Well, like, we're about the same age, and we did go to different schools together. So, I'm, <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. So you're, it's right on board. Mm-hmm. If you go, if you put on a blonde wig, you can keep the mustache and just be Madonna. Yeah, there you go. Well, that's not scary way. <laughs> yeah, but, you need some big cones sticking out. <laughs> anyway, uh, welcome to the show, Butch. Great. Thanks, it's, thanks for having me. It's my uh, my radio debut. I'm, oh. I'm I'm a virgin, as you would say. Yeah, yeah. As well, you would it, say, we're, we're gonna <laughs> we're, we're gonna destroy you today. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> well welcome to the show uh tell us a little bit about how long you've been doing comedy um i did it probably 15 or 20 years ago uh when life was funny uh, <laughs> uh the wife got sick and so i got out of comedy and i just got back into it about three or four months ago so i'm, I'm still kind of new at it I'm still kind of new kind of new but not kind of new. yeah kinda, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So, well, it's it's good to have you back in comedy. You were up at Wiley's this past Sunday, right? Yeah, yeah. I totally. Yeah, I don't it happens. Want to talk. I'm, well, I'm I'm glad I left before that. Yeah, I'm glad was, you did uh, too, because you wouldn't have me here right now if you just saw that see, Sunday I, night. I, I, spent, <laughs> I spent like most of the weekend at, at Wiley's, so I had to I had right. to head out a little bit early. Yeah, you know? I yeah. I love being there, but at the same time, it's like uh, I have a home, and a wife, and a dog, and. Now should you're just probably, bragging. Okay. Should, I should at least spend some time with the dog. <laughs> oh, boy. She's not listening. She, she, it was her, it was she her never choice. listens when I'm talking on or off. Oh, okay. So we're good. It was her idea. Now go spend some time yeah, with your dog. Right, right. Exactly. Yeah, go yeah. play with your dog. <laughs> I'm busy. Yeah. Mama's watching his shows. So, uh,. You say you said you were doing comedy about fifteen or so years ago. How how long were you doing comedy at that time? Uh, I only did it for probably a year or two. Okay. Um, I get into it with uh, I used to work with Jeff Bang at uh, Applebee's, and he would hear me at my tables and say, "Hey, I'll try to get into comedy." So I was dumb enough to say, "Okay." You know, right. um, it was fun. I mean, we travel around different places, and a Fox and Hound would have us come in. They put plywood up on the pool tables and we, <laughs> yeah, yeah, chicken we, wire. Right. right yeah. 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 <laughs> we do do open mic for the. The crowd that wasn't really there, but we had fun doing it. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, and bets and places like that. So. I've been at some open mics where we could have used some chicken wire up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, who are some of your influences? What got you? What got other other than somebody coming up and saying you're a funny waiter, or you look funny when you're waiting tables or whichever? Uh, what? <laughs> well, I remember being young as a kid and watching Dean Martin, Jerry Lewis, you know, all, all the the guys from way back when and, right. and, and thought, you know, it'd be kind of cool to do something like that. But as you get up older in life, things like that just get put on the back burner, you know? So, yeah. uh, when, when Jeff approached me about it, I really started looking into it seriously. And, and, uh, I still am <laughs> actually <laughs> still looking at it seriously. Still looking at it seriously. You're taking but, your comedy seriously. Yeah, I'm <laughs> very seriously. It's not a laughing best. matter. If you see my set, you'll understand I, why. I, yeah, <laughs> well, like you said, Sunday night set didn't go well. That's that. Yeah, that's bad. When yeah. your first joke and you and you screw up your very first one. That's the longest six minutes of my life. I think it was. Sunday oh night. yeah, yeah, oh, that, yeah. That definitely yeah. can be. So you just flubbed the joke right off the bat. Right off very first right one. Right off the there. bat. Yeah, the whole yeah. the whole punchline had no meaning to it when I brought it up. And, <laughs> I mean, because. I did it like two or three times in the past, uh, and it just—I mean, people just lost it. They was laughing; it was crazy. And I thought, "Wow!" Because I can't write jokes. I'm—I'm I'm not a funny joke writer, you know. So this one, I kind of—it's this is my puppy, you know. So 
I said it two or three times. It went over great. And but Sunday night, I left out the middle part of it. And when I did the punchline, it was you could hear a needle drop. It was like, ah. and then I yeah. and I realized right then it was like. <laughs> So I had a few choice words on stage, and everybody yeah. laughed at that. So, <laughs> yeah, yep, that's when you just got to own it and move yep, on. I, I just, uh, yep, just move on. When I was first starting out, I, I did a lot of. I changed my set a lot, so I had, you know, I've probably got forty minutes of material. Oh, okay. And I've only been doing this for about three and a half years, but I've, I, you know, because I changed my set fairly often. Well, it, I was fairly new. I think I'd still was within the first year. And I thought I had 15 minutes and, uh, somebody put me on stage to do 15 minutes. I got about four minutes in, <laughs> I could remember every setup and every premise. I could not remember a punchline. <laughs> so it was just, you know, and I, I struggled for another two or three minutes and finally the host walked by and I said, Hey, I'm done. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Here you go. Take this mic. <laughs> I'm gone. And, uh, that, that was a bad thing is, you know, sitting down to finish the rest of the show. Cause I came with people that wanted to see the rest of the show. Right. Otherwise, oh, yeah. mm-hmm. otherwise I'd have just slinked out the back and headed on. <laughs> yep. That's what I felt like Sunday night. Yep. Yeah. Oh yeah. They, they can, they can definitely be rough. That yeah. was my, my first show was, uh, for a talent show in high school it was in front of like 500 people and it went pretty well. But then my second show, cause at that point the school was like, Hey, do you want to like, host events and then help us out when i was like sure why not i'm 16 with a huge ego i can yeah <laughs> so my second show ever my my school put on a, a prom fashion show which was supposed to be a bunch of the students modeling prom dresses because it was prom season hey can you come be some filler entertainment yeah sure why not and the only people in the crowd were the mothers of the models oh yeah that's... they didn't want to see me no. And they made that abundantly clear. <laughs> yeah. Did you at least get to model a nice prom, prom dress? Yeah, uh, I rocked the cowboy hat. This is back when I was rocking the cowboy hat. So <laughs> um, every show was was leather jacket, jeans, and a cowboy hat. That was that went on for the first two Styling. years of media. Yeah, it was that was yeah. my thing. That's that's what got you into radio. <laughs> Apparently, yeah. <laughs> From there, it was like you know what? Radio sounds like a lot of fun. I'm gonna. <laughs> yeah, it sounds. People yeah, told me that too. I got a face for radio. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've I've got a I've got a face for radio. I've got uh, nothing else. That's pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> got a body for IHOP. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That's uh. Or I haven't been to one of those in a while. So I now, mean, now, now you either. got me. Now you got me craving some IHOP. I just tried the uh, the four one six diner downtown Sunday before I went to Wiley's. Um, that took over where Fifth Street was. Hmm. Good food. Really? Very good. Good food for not a lot of money. Really? Yeah. We we should discuss food. We should. I love food. We went to, have you tried, speaking of downtown food, have you tried Table 33? I have not yet. That's on my list. The burger, man. Yeah. That thing is fantastic. Okay. That is probably one of the best burgers I've ever had. Really? If you get downtown, you go to Table 33, it's it's kind, it's kind of a froofy, uh, you know, hipster kind of place, yeah. but they they have the best burger you can find. They they got this little, uh, it's, it's like a, I don't even know how to describe, it's, it's, it's undescribable. Okay. <laughs> this burger, you just eat it. That's just eat the burger. That's his mouth watering. I guess. That's oh enough. man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I haven't, I haven't had lunch yet, so. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's the best endorsement is just. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've been, I've, I've been making a list of all the places people have been recommending because I've only lived here two years and I work nights, so I don't get to go out too much. So trying to make a list of all the places I still want to go try. I finally tried the trolley stop food. Oh. It was okay. Um, yeah. I, I haven't. See, I don't, I don't get downtown yeah. much until recently because my wife works downtown now okay. and since we don't. She works full time. She's in school full time. I work full time. I'm in school full time. I also have Wiley's stuff. I you know have to mm-hmm. take care of somewhat. I have the radio show. We've got so much going on that basically we have lunch together on Friday afternoon, and that's about. Yeah, <laughs> that's she's it. a good planner, isn't yeah. she? Yeah. Hey, yeah. Wiley's, has, <laughs> Wiley's has good food. Wiley's does. Wiley's have good, have good that that pulled pork sandwich is yeah, something to yeah. talk to mom about. That is good. Yeah, food. that's that's pretty good stuff. Yeah. But, uh, the best burger I've had was at a place in Kettering called Christopher's. Hmm. It's a little, little, it used to be like an all vegetarian place. Now they do both, but it's like, it's mostly like organic. So, so it's, you had your best burger at a vegetarian place. Well, it was an actual burger. It was half beef, half chorizo. Oh, okay. It was, okay. it was a good burger. That was a good Chirifo. burger. Chorizo. Yeah. Chorifo. Ch- yeah, half sure. Beef, half <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> See, we, we've we've gone from comedy to food critics. Yeah, yeah. That's, well, that's fine. That's I, fine. I I work part time as an ACT prep tutor, and so I use a lot of food metaphors when I'm explaining like how verbs and nouns and stuff work to kids. 
Yeah, whatever and they, works. And then they say, well, no, well, now we understand why Mr. Mike is yeah. is Mr. Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I get, I get distracted every now and then doing this show. Oh, no, it's got this big show. picture window it's there. That, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. well, I guess you could use this mic, but it'd just yeah. be, uh, then we'd both be distracted. There are, there are some good-looking women yeah. in here. I'll tell you, it's the first that, time yeah, I've ever been yeah. in side right state, and it's like, yeah. this is crazy. <laughs> I come in, and there's a bunch of music playing in the lobby out here. I mean, they're just jamming out. Do you guys hear that? Yeah, yeah it's like, is there some yeah. kind yeah, of event going on today? Oh, there and, could and, be. I didn't go through that. Because there was a bunch of school the buses side, so. and what looked like a bunch of high schoolers outside. Oh, it could be. It could be. Maybe it's high school day. I don't yeah. Know. I don't yeah. know. They're jamming, though. That's I remember those from college. <laughs> always, had, always had the temptation to walk by the high school group with, like, a stack of books and then just, like, fake having an existential crisis right in front of a high school kid. <laughs> I've got 32 papers to write by Friday. Yeah. Just start chucking books at them while you're crying. Yeah. Yeah. just for one class. Because <laughs> <laughs> they didn't bring the high schoolers to the school because we had an art gallery in our, in, our, in our student center. And so they'd bring these high schoolers for field trips, but then they'd send them down to the dining hall to eat with us so you'd lose table space real so suddenly your favorite table is no longer accessible oh, that's just wrong and they're loud and rowdy so you're like you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna make them uh i'm gonna make them suffer a little bit so yeah. you pull out the laptop crank up the the music and just act like an idiot and scare them off yeah that that works let that be a warning to any high schoolers out there when you go visit <laughs> a college know your place <laughs> <laughs> yep yep you're at the big kids table now they pay to go here <laughs> That's that's okay. Plumber just showed his crack walking by there. So we we get all sides of it. Now aren't you glad you're facing the other way? Yeah. Yes, yeah. Yep. <laughs> Thanks for that, Ryan. <laughs> See, I actually I used to work here in the uh, in the HVAC department. I was HVAC maintenance here, so yeah, so I know I know all the maintenance guys. He knows all their cracks. All their cracks. Yeah, 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 all their crack. cracks. So I didn't even see his face. <laughs> I can tell you exactly who oh. that was. So that that right there is a plumber's crack. That, that's and good. There's only a couple plumbers left on the payroll, so I it kind of narrows it down. It wasn't narrow, but it narrows it down. <laughs> it was, that's, oh, that's terrible. <laughs> but I, I I don't work here anymore. They didn't. They didn't fire me because of the radio show or anything either. I actually that's surprising. I, I That's actually shocking. left on my own. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I I kept waiting for it. I've waited several times to be called into the boss's office and uh, you know on a, on a Thursday morning after my show, <laughs> never happened. I was disappointed. <laughs> like, I was disappointed. I said, "You don't even listen to it, do you?" <laughs> that just that just hurts. Right? That's hurtful. <laughs> if any of you guys had listened to this, I would have been fired by now. <laughs> so anyway uh what's going on butch I mean- uh, <laughs> <laughs> nothing i um <laughs> made the long trip from troy ohio down here so yeah i've been here Oof. since nine i left early i didn't want to be late but uh now you mentioned something about working on a tro- show in uh, troy coming up. yeah show yeah troy, we're uh, uh trying to get together a, a benefit for hospice um we did we did one probably four or five years ago raised some money for hospice uh with another restaurant that I was working at, um, we did a, a buffet and a show for like twenty five bucks or whatever, and, and oh, sold cool. out. It was you know had Todd Young come up, Rob Haney, uh, Jesse Nutt, Jeff Bang. They all come up, yeah, fed them was... good food, give them beer, and they do just about anything. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So well, we're, yeah, we're, that's, we're, a, that's some good names there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, you know for them to come up and do everything pro bono, that was that was that was awesome. Absolutely. You know? And uh, so hopefully we're going to get another good turnout. Um, I got an okay from. From all the comics I talked to so far, that they're willing to come up, just getting a, a venue, a place to do it, to where everybody can see the stage real good, and right. you know, so we got a couple things going. On. Plus, we're getting in our busy time of the year up at the restaurant, and, and you know, so we're trying to just trying to bend it all in together and make things work for for the hospice. Yeah, well, that, that's that's good cause too. Cause oh they, yeah, they do yeah. a lot of good work. Yeah, when my wife was sick, man, they, all I had to do was pick up a phone call, and they were the, they were there within the hour, whatever I needed. It was yeah. it was just awesome. So. I, I, I kind of feel like I want to do something for them as as much as I can, yeah. you know, because it's a it's an awesome organization. That's a good thing. See, yeah. co- comedy and silliness can can You're do sure. some good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you may not believe it sometimes, but comedy actually it can, it can do some good. I, I just know <laughs> next time I have to put it, it's not a rated G show on the tickets. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, yeah if you've ever heard good. Todd Young. Uh, Todd oh. Young mm-hmm. is it? Okay, yeah, yeah. he's because uh, he, he's actually doing a. Uh, He's going to do the uh, he's doing the New, New Year's, Year's Eve show yeah, Wiley's, at yeah. Wiley's. Yeah, yeah, so I I don't have anything going on New Year's Eve, so I have a feeling I'm going to be hanging out yeah. there. I, I I might be down here. He probably won't want to see me. He kind of unfriended me on Facebook over politics, which was kind of <laughs> petty I thought, oh, really? on my part. Yeah. But 
I'll probably just go down to kind of screw that in a little bit. (laughs) (laughs) See, I I can't say that there's so many different views of politics. I have a hard time unfriending somebody. Uh, Yeah. You Mm -hmm. know. It's usually that when they're an idiot in other ways, I'm fine with it. But <laughs> but, but politics, everybody has so many, there's so many varying opinions. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And he, he was so set in his ways and was like, I'll see you, buddy. Said, okay, yeah. whatever. You know, that's well, most, most political arguments these days are all perennial anyway, so it's hard to pick. Yeah. Hard to settle on what is the right and the wrong way to look at something. Everyone's got an argument for it. So. Yeah. Well, yeah, with, with a political argument, it's, it's basically, it's wasted breath. You yeah. Because you're... You're not you're not going to go to somebody who's die hard on the other side of the fence and you and talk them over to you. It's not going to happen, no, and no, they're no. not going to talk you no. over. It's just you might you might as well just each grab a stick and smack you yeah. smack the other upside the head with it. You're going to get more. Mm-hmm. You know, you're going to get further that way, right? At least right. a little more satisfaction <laughs> yeah. from it. <laughs> That's why, Especially if you hit harder. You're, right, right. That's why your mouse has a scroll wheel, guys. Just keep exactly, scrolling. Right. Or if you're yeah. on your keep phone, on going. yeah, just keep keep swiping yeah. the thumb and just keep scrolling past it. Don't even yep. worry about it. Yep, just, just, just like your Tinder account. Just keep swiping just left. Just keep swiping left. <laughs> keep swiping left. That's not nice. <laughs> uh, do we want to hit a news story before we take another break? Yeah. I know you, well, you said you're going to be heading yeah, out. Yeah, I'm going to duck break. out here in a minute. Okay, uh, so we'll, uh, we'll, we'll see if we can find a good, uh, a good news story here. Uh, let's see. Well, there's a cow loose in Brooklyn, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> uh, New York, New York City police wrangled a cow on the loose in a Brooklyn park on Tuesday after the animal became a spec a spectacle for tourists and New Yorkers alike when it was spotted uh, roaming the streets and enjoying the park facilities. Uh, the bemused bovine and camera wielding humans stared at each other through a chain link fence for several minutes at other times the beast wandered curious around cur- curiously around the 526 acre prospect park the largest in the borough of brooklyn and the artificial turf field normally used for human sporting events officers used soccer goals to fence the animal in on a baseball diamond but the cow barreled through one of the nets knocking down a police officer and stealing third uh, <laughs> police eventually trapped the cow between two vehicles parked on either side of the baseball field's bench uh, area after an officer appeared to fire a tranquilizer dart at it. Cows I think that was actually <laughs> my ex-girlfriend. <laughs> Is it that was? Yeah. You, you had to fire a tranquilizer yeah, dart? Yeah. Okay. I, I have, I have questions. <laughs> Thinking how about, did it get there? How did, yes, the, how did yes. a cow get to Brooklyn? Have you never seen City Slickers? <laughs> <laughs> that was Norman. That was Norman. <laughs> By the way, Mitch, I milked your cow. <laughs> the cow's name is Norman. Yeah. I'm going to go wash up. <laughs> oh, uh, so, man. yeah, Norman was running around on the loose in Brooklyn. So yeah. I remember, like, the last week I lived Billy in... Billy Crystal wasn't keeping an eye on it. <laughs> the last week I lived in, in the South, I uh, was watching the news, and it was, it was you know, the, they're doing that thing where they're, they're chit-chatting before the end of the show. And right as they go to credits, oh, by the way, there was a shark on I-77 today, and the credits rolled. And I was like, no! I want to know how a shark ended up on the highway. Sharknado, man. <laughs> Everybody knows that one. <laughs> yeah, that, that, I, I hate those news teasers like that. Yeah. Do that. It's like, no, give me the give me the info. I need I need to know. I need to know how a cow got in Brooklyn. Yeah. I need to know how a shark got on the I interstate. I don't care that they tried to trap it with soccer goals on a baseball diamond and failed. I'm, well, the, although that's kind that's of funny, funny, you know. And that that raises more questions. Well, that's but. that's that's why the cow got away. They weren't using the proper equipment. It's true. You can't use soccer uh, goals on a baseball diamond. Exactly. It doesn't work. They should have used that. Well, I don't know what you would use on a baseball diamond. It's, it's but. like trying to play soccer with baseball bats. Yeah, you don't. <laughs> it makes it more fun for some of us. Yeah, but for others, they don't have as good a time. Exactly. <laughs> the losing team does not recover as well. Also, what what, what cops were like? We need to trap this thing. Grab a get, goalie. Some, get some soccer goals. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got a brilliant idea. <laughs> How far do they have to go to get the soccer goals, to lift those awkward things, to carry them back to the baseball diamond while the cow just waited? Oh, you're going to get some soccer goals? I'll wait. Yeah, I'll, I'll just, wait. I'll just chew on some artificial turf. <laughs> yeah. This, oh, <laughs> this is saltier than I'm used to. <laughs> <laughs> Which isn't the first time today I've said that. <laughs> uh-huh. Oh, do tell, do tell. <laughs> and, and in other news, <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> See, there you got a teaser where you and want this more has information. Been the final episode of the life with Don Smith. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's terrible. But yeah, they. Uh, I guess I never would have thought to grab soccer goals to trap a cow. That's not. And I and I feel like especially it's, if there was a tranquilizer yeah. available. Right, yeah. Hey, you know yeah. what, guys? Why don't I tranquilize it? Where were you when we were grabbing soccer yeah. goals? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. What were you running bases? Get in line, man. Uh, <laughs> they could have at least you know corralled it into the dugout or something. Yeah. You know, waited for its next at bat. Right. Just pretend, I don't know. just pretend like you were going to go tag it out, and then it would have just held held still and not moved. Yeah, you know, yeah it would have ran back and yeah. And see, I know a little bit about baseball. Yeah. I know a little <laughs> bit about baseball. Yep. <laughs> yep. Anytime a cow's leading off, just you know, throw it. Throw, act like you're going to throw it. He's going to go running back. What it is, base. the catcher didn't send it the right hand signals. That's the catcher true. needed That's to true, send it the yeah. right hand signals down in his crotchal area. Crotchal. To tell it not to move. Crotchal, 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 crotchal area. area. I like that. Crotchal area. That's a technical term. <laughs> that's a technical term. <laughs> is that a baseball term or a soccer yes. term? Crotchal. <laughs> that's that's probably a soccer term. Right? So you gotta. You, you gotta. <laughs> Actually, no. That is a baseball term because I used to be a catcher, and you would get hit in the crotchal area a lot. Yeah, I'm sure. See that that was the bad thing. I was a catcher when I played little league. So oh, the pads, man. I was a big kid. I mean, uh-huh. I was, you know, I'm, I'm a big guy now, but I was a big kid and their, their little pad that they had for the catcher wasn't quite the right oh, size. No. They never are. So I'd crouch down and you have that little, the, the, the little ball, uh, ball mm-hmm. flap that comes down over and every time that thing would pop up Yeah. and our pitcher was terrible. Yeah. So he'd bounce one off the plate. It'd bounce up right underneath that ball flap, and I'd be down. Yeah. <laughs> I and, hated baseball. And, and, and thus, puberty right was in stunted. The, right, right in the yeah. crotchal area. He yeah. hit puberty a little bit later as a yeah. result. So. Yeah, what one of them still hasn't dropped. It's, I'm, I'm 41 years old. <laughs> and that was Little League? You said that was Little League? Yeah. yeah. Little Although league? I got a lump in my throat. I'm not <laughs> Uh, yep, this is definitely our last show. <laughs> well, I'm glad I let's, got the experience. You're, yep, you're, not, it a good one. you're not off the air after today at this point. Walk yep. into the station yep. manager and say, do you actually pay attention? <laughs> we're, if we're not off the air after today, we can do anything. anything. We can get away with anything. Oh, man. No, actually, I'm sure there's been worse. <laughs> oh, uh, on a college radio station, I can only imagine. There's been, yeah. I'm sure there's been yeah. several shows that have lasted half an hour <laughs> out yeah. of their two-hour yeah. slot. Yeah, I, I, I've, I've had those shows. I've had, <laughs> I've had, I've had to be the boss that, that pulled some of those shows on it, occasion. My, my first show was really fun because I got to the studio and nobody gave me the codes to get into the doors. And it was 8 oh, o'clock in the morning man. and nobody was here. And nobody was coming in till 9. Oh. So I had no door codes of me and a guest sitting outside 20 minutes after the show was supposed to start <laughs> before if I finally got a hold of somebody that gave me some door <laughs> codes. So then I come in here and my training on all this equipment was six months before or about, oh. well, about three months before. So I couldn't play a song. I got us on the air and that was about all I could do. And I went to play a song. I couldn't get a song to play. Couldn't get anything to come up. So you know, kind of like now with the phones. <laughs> <laughs> Still can't figure that out. Yeah, we, we finally got Lee Mays in on the phone. So, uh, and next week we'll have a new phone system and you won't know what to do. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, once, once we figure it out. Well, there was something disconnected back then. Oh, okay. But last week, uh, Greg Hahn called in to the oh, show. Oh, yeah. And I was really looking forward to talking and, to Greg Hahn. And nothing worked. We couldn't get the, <laughs> couldn't get the phone working. <laughs> I found out there was stuff turned off on this board that shouldn't have been turned off. And it's like, well, why are people messing with stuff? And so. yet the funniest part of that show was Greg Hahn because he was just so mad. Yeah, well, mm-hmm. Greg Hahn's yelling all the time That's anyway. True. So, <laughs> which I, I did get to see him that weekend at Wiley's. Absolutely hilarious, man. I have yeah. Oh, I, yeah. I laugh till I hurt. That guy is amazing. So. Greg, Greg Hahn is one of those guys where you just like, What's it like to be you? <laughs> what what goes in your head? <laughs> Maybe yeah. I don't want to know, but <laughs> yeah, very. I don't see how he kept that energy up for two shows. Uh, that that's just crazy to me. Anyway, uh, we're gonna go ahead and take a break. Uh, I may have a call coming in later on from uh, from Mike Paramore. I'm not 100 percent sure on that. I never got it confirmed. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> you know, that's it radio. might happen. Yeah. It might not. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take a little break. Uh, play some more Potter's Field. Just because I can, 
and probably probably run down the hallway again just because I have to. Uh-huh. <laughs> and we will be back here shortly. Down 
Are you into making music, videos, or podcasts? Are you a local comedic talent in need of some much-needed publicity? Are you a behind-the-scenes professional interested in audio, video production, graphic design, and public relations? Eventide Entertainment is actively seeking talents, clients, and professionals to help our business grow into something truly special. And we want you to be one of those. For more information, go to facebook.com slash Eventide Entertainment or send us an email at eventideent at gmail.com. I missed my cue. <laughs> We're back on the air. <laughs> this is the Life Radio Show. I'm your host, Don Smith. Uh, Mike Shea headed out the door. Uh, good luck on your interview, sir. I hope it goes well. And uh, left in the studio with me, uh, Butch. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. It's it's a fantastic. We're we're gonna roll on. We're gonna have a great show. I look at it as I'm uh, a survivor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're yeah. the only you haven't been kicked. Out. You haven't been voted out of the studio right. yet. Right. Right. <laughs> but the, the day is young. So, well, we've only we've only got like uh, 25 more minutes. So. Oh, great. So it's all you. Go ahead. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, <laughs> take it over. <laughs> okay. I, I, I can read. I can read 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 this book 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 if you want. Uh, that might take a while. <laughs> Hey, uh, I got confused. I went down to the restroom a little bit ago, and at, I, what I saw here was all gender, all gender multi stall restroom sign. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it was like on both doors. Yeah. And I'm staring. I was confused. I've never been flip, in that situation. Flip a coin, man. <laughs> yeah. And this lady comes up and she goes, "Can I help you?" I said, "I just want to go to the bathroom." <laughs> she said, "Which one?" I said, "The men's room." Yeah. It's no kidding. <laughs> She goes, well, in the past, the ladies was over here and the men's was over here. So you'll want to go in that one. I said, well, I just don't want to walk in on some lady. She says, it doesn't matter anymore. And I yeah. thought, what kind of yeah. world are we living in? Hey, it's, it's. Yeah. So I stayed in there as long as I could, but no, no, yeah, no women came in. in. No. <laughs> you were waiting. I was waiting. See, yeah. <laughs> See, that, that's, that's always been my point. You know, there will never, there will never be truly peace in this world until we can all poop together. That's uh, really. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, you can look you, at it that way. You, I guess you don't look convinced. <laughs> <laughs> you're just you're just thinking old oh, school, boy, man. Oh boy, <laughs> you got to hold hands and oh, and, and, and by, uh, trade toilet paper. Is that what it is? <laughs> yep. Yep. That, actually, uh, I learned that that's not what those holes in the stall walls are for. They're not for holding hands. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> yep. yep. It's for, it's for I'm sharing have to come in to college. The, yeah, I mean, it's it's for sharing in the in the glory of humanity that's what glory. those holes are for those right. are those are glory <laughs> i was gonna say but i didn't know if i was allowed or not <laughs> well I, I didn't say all of it i didn't okay. finish all the right. statement so we're good <laughs> <laughs> yeah there have there have been some confused looks from yeah folks i was, I was, that, I was that aren't used confused. to that yeah. uh to me ah, it is what it is it's a uh, it's, it's a it's a new world we're entering into. Butch. It, it we're is the, yes. We're the we're the old relics, right? And, right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's all good. I I welcome all people. It's Absolutely. A, that, that's that's yeah. what makes the world. All all people can come to comedy clubs as long as you can laugh and not get offended by everything. I'm good with you. That's hard to do. That that's is, that hard is, to do. That is very yeah. hard to There's do. There's always that's, that one in the crowd that yeah, just didn't yeah. like what you said. Don't oh, understand. Yeah. It's oh, a yeah. comedy club. Hey, and as long as it's only one, that's good. They right, can get right, out. Yeah. We won't miss well, them. See, I get a whole room. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what my well, problem is here. that could be you. That could be you. <laughs> <laughs> that sometimes it's not all of them. Yeah, right, right. Sometimes yeah. <laughs> if there's one common factor. <laughs> yeah. I figured that out Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> Those are rough shows. I remember the, the first, it was the third show I ever did. I did at the chapter bar up in Fairborn. I may have told you this yeah, story. Yeah. And yeah, that was it. amidst the silence. I just heard that. This is awful. <laughs> <laughs> so at least that was proof positive that I wasn't doing a good job that yeah, night. Yeah. So at least I didn't have to wonder. You know? <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Because we all have it when we get at home. And I wonder if I did a good job. Wonder if, yeah. you know, if anybody's going to comment on Facebook. Yeah, there, and, there are some days. Take you all just the wonder know. out of that. Right? Yeah. Some days you just absolutely know you did not do well. <laughs> and that, well, Sunday night, it sounds like you, you figured that out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> they can be rough. Cause I usually, I doubt myself when, even when I have a decent show. When I have a good show, I mean, unless it's very clearly that you know they're on their feet screaming and throwing their panties i'm still going to doubt myself oh i do too i guess it... and depending on the size of the panties i might still right, right. <laughs> <laughs> i guess everybody kind of does that I, I don't know unless yeah, you've been in it for yeah, yeah, it's, quite a few years a, yeah it's that self-doubting thing it's just uh, yeah because uh, after my first couple times up and people 
came from work down to see me. Oh, and they were all saying, yeah, you did a great job, great job. You know, and it's like, yeah, you're just saying that because you know me, we're right, friends or whatever, right. you know. So you don't really know. I mean, yeah, my, my mother comes to most of my shows and says, well, you're the funniest one there. It's like, well, yeah, you're my mother. Me, yeah. <laughs> What are you supposed to do? So you need to work on that and then kick, right. me in the, kick me in the uh, the crotchal area. The no, crotchal way. area. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a new term for it. I'm going I'm to like keep that. using that. Crotchal. Anyway, uh, do we, <laughs> we we have plenty more news stories to cover. Okay, let's hear it's, some. It, it's like 20 minutes till, till the end of the show, which is typically when I hit news. We didn't last time around because we had a phone call come in. Uh, the legendary Bigfoot and other creatures like it have reportedly been spotted near a northern California lake according to a paranormal investigator. Uh, Jeffrey Gonzalez, a self-described paranormal expert. Is there any other kind of uh, than self-described? Is right. there, no, is there like a paranormal expert that other people call him that and he didn't? No, I don't think so. Because usually, usually yeah. I would think, because a paranormal expert is kind of a specialized field that there's not really a lot of schooling for. So you would have to be self-described. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like, what... <laughs> I'm a paranormal expert. Hey, hey, uh, thanks for telling me because I would have had no other way of knowing. It's not like he's got a certificate that right, he carries right. around or a license to be a parent, so he'd have to be self-described. Uh, I'm, I'm a getting self off on a comedian. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm getting off on a tangent on this you story. Are, yeah, but let's go back to it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jeffrey Gonzalez, a self-described paranormal expert, said he heard about the sighting from a local farmer who said he saw the creature and five others running on his ranch near Avocado Lake. Uh, he said one of them, which was extremely tall, had a pig over its shoulder and the five scattered. And the one with the pig was running so fast. I didn't see, it didn't see an irrigation pipe and it tripped with the pig flying over. Uh, Gonzalez is a talk show host and an investigator at paranormal central. In addition to being a technician at AT&T. <laughs> so <laughs> that man, he's one you should listen to because he spans all fields. He's, he's an AT&T technician, a talk show and host. flying and, all at once. At, uh, yes, and pigs fly in California, mm -hmm. which I've heard that. But now uh, Jeffrey Gonzalez has given us proof, even if it is just self-described. <laughs> self-described proof <laughs> that uh, uh, Bigfoot can make pigs fly. So. Great, great. Yeah. And, the, and that's what the farmer said. He said, I'll believe in, big, I'll believe in Bigfoot when pigs fly. And, and Bigfoot heard and that. And now he right, does. Exactly. <laughs> now he believes yeah, in Bigfoot. Like, there you go. Proof positive. <laughs> At Avocado Lake. So uh, <laughs> is, it, is it Avocado Lake because it's avocado shaped or because it's green? Green. It's green. It's, okay. Yeah. That makes the sense. Algae. Yeah, yeah, that makes it's like St. Mary's. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I've, well, that was red algae up there. So oh, that's, was it? That's oh. like Salsa Lake. I no, guess, okay. Instead Great. of avocado, Great. <laughs> Marinara Lake. That's <laughs> Lake Marinara. Is to be you know a little <laughs> little more proper with it. Uh, uh, an Oklahoma man is greasing the wheels of justice with lots of Vaseline. When John Wayne Kellerman, which is a fantastic name, that's a manly name, Kellerman. John Wayne Kellerman. Kellerman. When he was pulled over on October 15th, he could have easily given the off officers the slip. That's because the 54-year-old <laughs> was mostly covered in Vaseline on his hands and his upper and lower body parts. Uh, Deputy Daryl Beebe of the uh, Garfield County Sheriff's Department made the discovery after he pulled over Kellerman for doing 57 in a 45-mile-per-hour zone. And let me get to the next page, and we'll continue this. Uh, when Beebe walked up to the car, he said Kellerman was nearly naked except for a bikini thong. He also noticed a pornographic magazine was on the passenger seat. A nearly empty jar of Vaseline was located next to the man in the vehicle, BB noted. A sergeant arrived at the scene of the traffic stop to do vehicle inventory, according to the Enid News and Eagle. Uh, the officer noted that the driver's side of the car was extremely greasy. <laughs> Wouldn't it be? <laughs> nothing going on here, officer. <laughs> yep, nothing, nothing to going see on here. here. Nope. Please move along. Just move along. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Just just a just a fifty four year old man in a thong covered in Vaseline. Are, are these news reports you just make up or are these actual these news reports? These are actual okay. news reports. I'm first time otherwise, here, I'm just kinda wondering. Otherwise it wouldn't be fun. It wouldn't be fun if I just made them up. No, this is the this is the real deal. Because you can't make stuff up like this. Wow. Wow. You know, how, I mean, how, what kind of a, what kind of a creative genius would have been able to come up with a fifty four year old man covered in Vaseline wearing a thong? Getting pulled over by the cops. Well, I did get pulled over last week if you want to bring that up yeah you're 54 <laughs> yeah. i'm sorry i didn't and it realize wasn't vaseline it was a petroleum jelly 
Uh, well, yeah. So, well, you're you're a comedian, so you have to. <laughs> you, you can't go with the uh, high dollar stuff. <laughs> we have a call coming in, so I'm gonna oh, I'm gonna answer it and see what we got here. Uh, if I if I can get the phone to work. <laughs> this is the life. You're on the air. Hey, this is Mike Paramore. Hey. I'm calling in to say stupid things on the radio. Awesome. We've been saying stupid things on the radio for some time now. <laughs> well, then I just fit right here. Awesome. It's, it's good to hear from you. Really enjoyed the show at Wiley's this past weekend. Man, it was a super fun show. And if you made it to the show and you're wondering why I sound different, I just woke up, so my voice is very sexy when I wake up, so... It is. I was going to I was gonna comment on that. I was going to flirt with you. I was going to say you sound much sexier than you did Saturday night at the show. Yeah. I don't know what it is. It's genetics. When I first wake up, I'm a very sexy man. <laughs> yeah, what happens the rest of the day, though? That's It tails off slowly. It yeah. really does. But... <laughs> well, about good. hour four or five, I'm very, I'm very, very unremarkable. That's, a, <laughs> that's a, well, I... I guess so that's why you wake up later in the day, so to try to hold on to it more. Last uh, as long as possible, correct. Sir. Yeah, because I, I, I got up at 7 today. I was ugly by 8.30. And I, <laughs> <laughs> it's that very small window. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's, always, it's always good. This is the first time I've had a, a headlining comic on from last week's show to promote the show that just happened at Wiley's. So that's <laughs> It's all about timing on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> so first time for everything. You may this may be a, the birth of a new format. Why not? Yeah, we, well, it's well this way we can find out what you really thought about the show. That's like you just tease people about what they missed and then make guilt trip them into coming the next week. <laughs> yep, yep. Don't you wish? Yeah, this is actually promoting. It's talking about your show to promote the next show that they can actually go to. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> Well, it's good to hear from you. Uh, well, tell us a little bit about what got you started in comedy and how long you've been uh, how long you've been performing. Um, or is it too I've early been doing in the morning? Comedy for almost eight years now. Uh, what got me started? Gosh, uh, a knee injury and peer pressure is what got me started <laughs> <laughs> in comedy. Uh, I honestly don't have a regular story of you know being huddled in my basement listening to like Eddie Murphy raw against my parents will or something like that i <laughs> comedy kind of snuck up on me um i was convinced i was going to be a, a pro football player and then i got injured in college uh university of akron and then i just started not caring what came out of my mouth and then people started <laughs> laughing at it that's good that's good it, it's the way you started that story off it sounded like somebody snuck up with you with, on you with a baseball bat it started with knee and <laughs> knee injury and peer pressure <laughs> i better be funny to get out of this mess <laughs> that's kind of how it happened yeah, that, that's kind of how it happened it's yeah. not dissimilar yes <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's like a drug deal went bad and that got you started in comedy yeah, very, very similar to that. I really was not looking to be. I'm not a real center of attention type of guy. I just turned out to be good at it. That's all. Well, that's good though, because you do a, a lot of a lot of uh, crowd work. I noticed, which is yes, yes, it's very. Uh, to me, that's the most interesting part. I, I, you know, a lot of comedians get up there and they just want to, you know, recite the jokes that they wrote, which is fine. That's not a bad thing. It's just. Uh, you know, it, unless you're writing like a crazy man, that can get kind of mundane. I, I love the interaction with people. I love finding out about people, meeting people. To me, that's the best part because I'm never going to meet that person, you know, ever again. So it's just almost, it's almost like an opportunity almost. So it's it's pretty fun just to talk and find out about people. Yeah, because that's one of the things that struck me about your show is it was. I th it seemed like it was pretty much all crowd work. There wasn't, uh, I mean, how, how much actual material pre-written material did you go over? Um, I did about three or four jokes that I, oh, okay. that I had pre-written. Um, but a lot of that stuff just leads into, to me, it's just more leads into more conversation because I'll, you know, say a joke about something that I thought about and that I wrote, uh, maybe about, you know, relationships or, you know, childhood type stuff. And then it'll lead into another, you know, another observation that makes me want to talk to somebody else. So 
Yeah, it's uh, it's all it's all pretty much derived or 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 based around trying to get to know the audience a little bit. Yeah, I, I'm always impressed with the, with a comic that can do a lot of crowd work because that's that's one thing I've always fallen short on. Is I I, I get it, I've only been doing it for about three three and a half years, so I'm still just reciting my material. I, uh, every, <laughs> right, right. every now well, and like then, like I said, it takes a while. It, it, when I first started doing it, I saw a, I saw another comic doing it, and I just was amazed. I uh, I was just so completely enamored by it and i was just like wow he just he just did a, a 30 minute set and and talked to the audience for 20 minutes so it was just it was amazing to me and i was like i'm going to i have i'm going to learn how to do that but it took like for me to be like all right if i had a five minute set i would only prepare four minutes or i would open my setup trying to trying to observe things in the audience and stuff like that and uh it went horribly Sometimes <laughs> it was it was god awful. It was painful um, a lot of times, and it was a lot of awkward moments of just staring into the eyes of strangers. And uh, but eventually, you get a you get a mojo about it, and it and it kind of kind of works out. Yeah, that's good because yeah, that's a, that's always something that impressed me. And you you uh, you did just it seemed so natural with you up there, just talking to the audience like it was like it was no big thing. Like it was just a yeah. normal conversation. Yeah, that's the uh, that's the not caring part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess I I need to develop that. Uh, a lot of companies care a little bit. I mean, you're supposed to care because you you don't you you know if you don't care, then who knows what is going to come out of your mouth? But that also loose a little bit of you know whatever inner talent or natural talent you may have. So. Um, you know, there's a, it's a healthy, a healthy amount of, I don't care is, is good. Right. It, enough for an improv. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have, have you, have you ever tried improv? Improv was what I wanted to do first. I did not want to do stand up. I was completely against doing stand up. I, I like the idea of being able to, you know, pop up, say something stupid and then pop back and being part of the team and not being, like I said, I'm not really a good center of attention type of person. So it was cool to have to, you know, divide that attention up between the team. And I was just one of the people who on stage saying something stupid. Uh, but to audition for this improv team that I wanted to be a part of, <clears throat> they asked me to do a stand up set. <laughs> and uh, I just thought I was like, oh, well, that's just not what I'm trying to do. But <laughs> I ended up doing it anyway. It went well. It went very well, actually. And I got off stage, and I was like, okay, that was cool. But I will never ever do that again in my life. <laughs> <laughs> so that that and, was that was kind of your first open mic was just an audition for uh, an improv troupe. Yes. Oh, that's interesting. Yep. Yeah. And I ended up getting into the improv troupe, and then they we did one show, and then they kind of fell apart. And I was like, oh, dang. <laughs> There's a lot of work and material for nothing. So. You're right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so where where'd you go from there? Did you, is that when you decided to pick up some of the material and just try – try stand up from there or? not at all not even a little <laughs> bit i told i was very much against stand up what happened was um my sister my little sister heard about that show and she told uh, it was like months later and our church was having an event and uh, i guess my little sister told my church that i'm a comedian and i'm like i am not a comedian <laughs> at all i I told people things I wrote down on paper one time. Like, I'm not a comedian. And uh, so she told my church I was a comedian, so my church asked me to host this event. And you can't say no to your church. So I ended up hosting the event, and uh, it went very well. It went super well, and I I was done with that. And then I said, you know, I will never, ever do that again, ever (laughs) in life. I'm never getting back up there again. And it just kind of snowballed. It just kind of like this... It's just kind of like this reoccurring asking of me to do stuff. Like it was, I was doing comedy for two years before I actually said I'm doing comedy. Like it was, <laughs> it was super weird. So after a couple of church shows, then uh, Columbus, I was living in Columbus at the time. My friends peer pressured me into this, uh, the Columbus funniest person in Columbus contest or whatever. They signed me up without my knowledge. I got a phone call saying, 
we just want to confirm your spot on whatever day. And I'm just like, who is this? And confirm what? <laughs> And it's like, well, you're all paid up. You got people coming, da da da. So um, after this conversation, I'm like, ah, oh, dang. So now I got to go down to the room. So I did the competition. Ended up coming in second, and uh, uh, and one of the prizes for coming in second was automatic submission into into the Go Bananas competition in uh, in Cincinnati. And so I went down there, did that competition, ended up finishing second. And the prize for that was a week of hosting work. So it's like I never really tried to work ever. Like for the first two years of me doing comedy, I never tried to work. And I always, stuff always came up. So that was just me. That was just, I, I, it's almost like I was supposed to do it. Yeah. So that, that was, it wasn't so much peer pressured into it as hijacked. As well. <laughs> Pretty much. That's it, was, it, it, was, like. it was against my will. Yeah. Either way. <laughs> You were kidnapped by comedy. That's fantastic. <laughs> Absolutely. Because <laughs> most comics, especially within the first two years, they're just, they're just dying to get on stage somewhere. <laughs> and you were I trying not, to avoid it. <laughs> that was not my experience at all. I, <laughs> I, was, I was trying to avoid the stage if at all possible, and it just was not working out. Yeah. Well, I, I'm glad it didn't because I, I really enjoyed your show. Do, do you have anything coming up uh, soon in the area? Um, in the area, I'm not sure. My next, uh, my well, next it, stop the, is, uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan. Um, then this, I'm this going radio to the show goes for a couple out. weeks to do comedy, uh, in Atlantis. Um, oh, wow. uh, Atlantis has a comedy club in there. So I'm going to be there for two weeks. And then after that, I got a college run. Um, then I'll be in Cleveland, uh, doing comedy on uh let me see what that date is i got a one-nighter in cleveland at the nine hotel downtown which is an amazing room hmm. and it's on november 18th and then thanksgiving is when i'm going to really destroy any progress i've made on this diet <laughs> and then, that, that's that's what <laughs> then thanksgiving's the college, for <laughs> then i'll be back in i'll be back in dayton december 14th through 17th cool I'll be back in Dayton doing, and uh, then Columbus, and then back in Cleveland. That's my that's my year. So cool. Uh, does it, this radio show isn't just local? It goes out as a podcast too, international and international. So we're all over the place. Uh, hopefully, we get out there further. Still, we want to be cool. we want to be broadcast into into the uh, into this whole solar system. We're looking. Well, that's awesome. well, I will judge you by the new random friend request I get, oh, <laughs> which will probably be very few. <laughs> I'll friend request it. Yeah, there you go. Butch, Butch will send you a friend request right now. <laughs> well, I appreciate you calling in. Do you, do you have a website or social media you want to put out there for anybody that wants to follow along with you? Absolutely. Um, you can uh, Facebook Mike Paramore, P A R A M O R E, Mike Paramore. Uh, Instagram is at Mike Paramore Jr. I think Twitter is at Mike Paramore Jr. The same thing. Um, my website is mikeparamore.com. Got these relationship videos I've been starting to do. Love if you click on those. Tell me what you think about those. And uh, we should do an in studio interview next time I'm in Dayton. Oh, absolutely. I'd love to. In December. We should, we should set that up. Yeah, hopefully I won't be kicked off the air by then. <laughs> you, you never know with this show. <laughs> well, I appreciate you calling in. Uh, I can't wait to see you next time you're uh, next time you're in the area. Looking forward to it, man. Thanks for having me. All right, thank you. Bye bye. Bye. All right, Mike Paramore going to be back in the area on. Uh, yeah, I'll get down. To see say you. December seventeenth, thirteenth or seventeenth, yeah. something like that. Yeah, awesome. Uh, go to mikeparamore dot com and check him out. Uh, absolutely really funny last weekend, but he, he does, he, he does like almost all crowd work, which just amazes me when somebody can do that. Cause that's an hour long set. Oh, he didn't just, hour, really? yeah, just, he was headlining and just mostly talking to the See, audience. That's, that's like I said earlier, I can't write my jokes. I like messing with the crowd more. That's why when I go down to Wiley's, I get Ed to get people up in the front row because there's a couple, right. couple, I don't want to call them jokes. A couple comments I make to try to make people laugh. Let's put it that way. And well, besides, you pay it. people per laugh. So. I pay. I pay per laugh. And, yeah. Well, and you did get to save some money Sunday <laughs> night. Yes, I did. Yes. <laughs> so, Thanks for bringing that up. So again that's there. good. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Hey, I, can I just plug where I work at? Absolutely. Go right hey, ahead. Hey, come up to Troy, Ohio. 
beautiful downtown Troy, Ohio. Come to the Caroline. Ask for Butch on Friday and Saturday night, and I'll try some new jokes out on you as I wait on you. So uh, best steak in the tri-state. Come on up and check it out. There you go. Yeah. Oh, now, and where, also, where's it located? Right on the square, right right on oh, downtown okay, Dayton. Okay. Right, in, um, right in the circle. Right on the there. circle, right okay. on the corner. Be the uh, southwest corner of, of the square. Okay, I'll uh, have to get up there and check black, it because I, I love steak. Up. Oh, we got the best steaks around, buddy. I'll but, tell you what. I, I'm, I might try to get up there, and, and possibly I, even this Saturday. I want I want to clarify something just before I come on the air here. My my boy texted me and asked me um, what I was on the radio for. Is he said he said was it for comedy? I said no. I said me and my boss won four point seven in the lottery. So he's all <laughs> he's all freaking out, thinking I won four point seven million dollars in the lottery, and it's yep, not true. Sorry, he, Jimmy. <laughs> he's never been so close to you. <laughs> I love my dad. Uh, it was funny to me. That's the way most of my jokes are. They're very funny to me. Yeah, that, that's <laughs> those are the best jokes when they're funny to <laughs> yeah. you, and everybody else just goes, "What's wrong?" That's that, that's how I always test out my new jokes on my wife because yeah. we have like polar opposite senses of humor, and that's how I know a joke is where I want it because I'll tell her and she'll just go. What is wrong with you? <laughs> like that's a keeper yeah, right a keeper. there. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Well, Butch, thanks for being on. Hey, I'd thanks like for to having thank, me. Thank all my guests. Actually, uh, Lee Mays called in. Mike Paramore called in, and uh, Mike Shea was on, and Butch was on with us. So uh, get out to Wiley's uh, this weekend. Actually, there's no show Saturday no. or Sunday. Come on this out weekend, November 5th. I'm going to try it again. November 5th. Uh, uh, Butch will pay you for laughing. That's right. I will. <laughs> Sit up in the front row. I do so, actually pay. Yeah. <laughs> he throws money around. I always try to run up there, but I forget when he's coming on. So uh, <laughs> that is it for this week. I want to thank you for tuning into the life. Uh, get out and see some comedy. Wherever you go, get out and see some comedy. Uh, and we will uh, we'll see you guys next week. Have a good weekend. This has been the Life Radio Show on WWSU 106.9 with your host, Don Smith. The Life is also available in podcast form on iTunes, Podbean, Stitcher, Spreaker, Blueberry, and YouTube, as well as on Eventide Entertainment's podcast network. Be sure to like the Life Radio Show on Facebook, and if you have any comments or suggestions, email thelife1069 at gmail.com. Thanks for listening. Now get out there and enjoy some live comedy this week. You can check out Wileyscomedy.com for all your upcoming shows. The brutal presence overwhelms me. The brutal presence overwhelms me.